thank you for being here, first of all, and, and I'm sorry, but I will um, only speak in English. Uh, it's much better for you. <laughs> um, although I, I've been telling uh, Carmen, and, you know, my, uh, my host sort of this evening, how much I, I, I love uh, Madrid. I spent a lot of time in Madrid in my childhood. Uh, yes, I am an Atletico de Madrid fan. Um, and, and I have a proof uh, to this, uh, which is me at age five. With my Atletico jersey on. Um, actually, it's the first uh, professional match I ever saw it was in Vincente Calderon. So I was, uh, I was really, uh, I was, I was big, and I'm hurting right now, like some of you, I guess. Um, but I I'm also French, and um, and I'm a big fan of Paris Saint Germain as well. So I'm doubly kind of <laughs> hurting at the moment. But uh, but Zidane is coming back, so um, so we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway. Um, Yes, I will talk to you about um, uh, the, the, uh, the experience of the New York Times, but, but, but maybe in the context, in the broader context of what is happening in the ad world today uh, and what does that do for, for publishers like the New York Times because, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're alone. And I know that a lot of people talk about the New York Times. We're, you know, we're being sort of... Uh, um, uh, sort of sing, you know, we, we, we singled that as a model, uh, perhaps in the news business. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, we think that um, it's, it would be very important for, for news publishers, important newspapers around the world to do well and perhaps to do as well as what the New York Times is, uh, is lucky to, to experience today. So this is what I, you know, I'd like to, um, uh, to talk to you about because uh, I feel that news, news is, as we know it in, in, you know, in, in the Western world, is extremely valuable, very important. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that you know, we can continue to enjoy this plurality of, uh, of news, content, opinion, and, uh, and, and of course the way that is it, it, it is all financed uh, has an impact and, you know, and, and, so, and will continue to, to play a big, uh, uh, an important role in the future. So, um, so what I'd you know, like to start with is to, is to ask the question whether some of us feel like, you know, you know, is there a crisis in advertising today? Do some of you feel there is a crisis in advertising today? No? You say yes, no. We have, a, we have different opinions about this, actually. It's interesting. Um, perhaps if you're, you know, if you're on my end, you know, on, on the new side, um, uh, you, you definitely will, and, and if you, you ask a question to, to news publishers around the world, they will say, oh yes, my God, you know, the world is collapsing around us. But if you are a marketer, or if you are, you know, working for maybe a television channel, maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that there is a crisis in advertising. And what is interesting is that, yes, advertising has never really sort of stopped, you know, growing over the years. So this is, you know, the 650 billion sort of, you know, uh, dollars industry. And, um, and what's interesting is that it continues to grow 45% uh, each year. And so there is nothing wrong on the face of it. Um, and besides, you know, sort of a bit of a financial crisis, um, you know, that uh, sort of put everything sort of uh, down. But, in, you know, when you put things in perspective, you know, over dec decades, it was a small adjustment uh, compared to, um, you know, to where we come from. And, of course, something happened in 2007. And we've been reading, we've all been reading uh, a lot about this, which is when um, uh, perhaps uh, the tech, some of the tech companies started to form, or in the case of Facebook, when they started to actually accept advertising as a source of financing. What's interesting is that when you go back to the early days of Facebook, they had a real debate internally whether they were going to, uh, to, to ask readers to pay, users to pay, or whether advertising was going to be the model. And there are videos that you can find actually on the internet uh, of them, you know, some of the executives at the time debating this. And you think, when you think about it now, you know, where, where the company is now, it's really, uh, it's really remarkable. And they talk about advertising as the necessary evil, just like any publisher would. You know, like it, you know, it's, it's really, really interesting. But anyway, so on the face of it, there's actually nothing wrong with advertising. Now, when you look at it by different sort of medium, um, of course, traditional legacy medium like print, magazines, newspapers, magazines, television, and so on, you have a very, very contrasted situation. What you see is that this incredible digital growth has been done at the expense of print. 
It has not been done at the expense of television, it has not been done at the expense of radio, it's been done at the expense of print, and newspaper print in particular. So of course, if you ask publishers like us around the world, they will all tell you the same thing, whether you come from a big country, a small country, um, uh, it's, you know, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in the middle of, of Africa, everyone is feeling the same and is under the same kind of, of pressure from what's happening in digital and from the social networks in particular. And we know that all dollars are converging, not just in digital and in general, but predominantly you know, with these you know, two players that are Google and Facebook. And what is the real problem with this? Because we are part of the digital um, um, uh, growth as well. We're, we're, we're part of the digital, digital world. You know, it's like, you know, and, and a lot of publishers are. The problem is that the dollars don't add up. The problem is that the dollars in print don't equate to dollars in, in digital. And that's a real problem for us because, you know, as we keep losing, at, you know, at the beginning we thought that it was just a question of time for, you know, for digital to take over print. And, um, and we realized, so it took us several years to realize that the, something was wrong <laughs> in the system. And what's wrong is the value. It's actually the value that we put in advertising in digital because it's a question of supply and demand. There is so much supply in digital that, of course, it keeps the price down. And, of course, you have the big platforms that have dictated the rules. They've, they've created the rules. But they've, they've created the rules for themselves, for platforms that are gigantic and that are global. And so it's very difficult when those rules impact every single sort of news publisher on the planet. So it's really, really, really complicated. Anyway, that's just sort of the, uh, the equation that we, uh, you know, we, have to, uh, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to face. And of course, there is something also that's, um, that's quite particular, which is that we're measuring success based not on the content and the value of the content, but on clicks. And whether you're producing a crappy website that generates zillions of clicks, or you're the New York Times, you're measured in the same way. And this is new in the, in the, in the, in the, in the ad business. This is new in the ad industry. Before, it was, it was very difficult to launch a new newspaper, even to launch a magazine. It took a lot of resources. Uh, it took a lot of preparation. Now, everybody can, lo can launch a website and the financing of most websites is advertising. So, of course, it changes a lot. And despite the many scandals, and we've, we're seeing scandals, we've seen sort of so many, actually, and, you know, and we write a lot about them, and I'm sure that you, know, you read a lot about, uh, about them, the problems over brand safety, and my God, there are a lot of problems of, you know, with, with brand safety today. And... Um, the many apologies that we get, we're getting from, uh, especially from, from these two companies. And it's interesting when you read carefully, they apologize every week over something. You know, it's, it's quite, quite interesting. But despite all of this, marketers are okay with it. And this is, this is again, remarkable that if you think of a company like Facebook that is so criticized, if you, th th there are some studies that actually show that um, uh, they, they, you know, that, that 10 years from now, you know, what, what companies will, will actually be a positive or have a positive impact on the world? You know, I mean, Facebook gets so much criticism and everyone thinks that they, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nuisance to the world. It's, it's incredible. Yet, this is where we all are and this is where most of the dollars are going. So marketers somehow are okay with it, and they're okay with it not because they, they, they love Facebook, because it does something for them. And actually, you know, people feel that it works. And so, of course, we as publishers, we have to, we have to understand that. And it's very, you know, but that's, that's, quite, um, uh, that's quite new. Now, there are a few advertisers, but actually very few, who are taking sort of public sort of stands and saying, no, we want to, you know, we want to we wanna hold them accountable for what they do, and maybe we won't accept certain things. But those are very rare, actually, companies. And actually, there are very, very few, very, very few companies. So, back to my question, do, you, do we think there is a crisis in advertising? There is definitely no financial crisis to advertising. Is there a moral crisis to advertising? I think there is. 
I think there's a real moral crisis to advertising because just think for a second that if we, a company like the New York Times or El País or Le Monde or wherever, you know, whoever, would be doing the same things that Facebook are doing today, I don't think that any of you would tolerate it. And so this is where it, it gets complicated. You know, we're all in this sort of you know, ecosystem and it gets extremely, extremely complicated. But somehow, some people seem to be, uh, the world seems to, uh, to be okay with, uh, you know, with this. Now, if it wasn't hard enough as it is you know, for news publishers, we have other guys coming. And they're coming in a big way because they're, really, they're already very, very big. And what's interesting is that when I read this, it's like Amazon has a plan to get profitable. I said, well, what do you mean they're not profitable yet? <laughs> it's, it's, inter it, it's amazing. So, so they, are, they are just barely profitable now. And of course, advertising is going to be the main source of financing. And we're already seeing Amazon becoming you know, quite big. Not quite as big as the, the other two, but, uh, but, but growing, uh, growing faster. So what's interesting is what, again, that's, that's you know, the digital economy in the world. So of course, you know, we've been doing everything that we've been asked to do about you know, being, being you know, a great digital player. But the reality is this, is you know, where the concentration of money with Google and Facebook. And if you, if you take just display advertising, which is probably what, you know, what, what we're m most concerned, all concerned about today here, uh, 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 the, 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 the share of Facebook would be even greater. And if you select it by, by platform and mobile, my God, I mean, they, you know, the share of business that uh, they're, they're receiving is absolutely astonishing. What that means also is that besides those big tech companies, and some smaller ones, but still big by any one of our standards here. You know, we are all fighting, when I say we, is the rest of people actually trying to get advertising are fighting for 25% of the pie. It's tough. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite tough. But that's just a reality of, you know, of, of the, uh, you know, of, uh, of, our, uh, of our business today. Um, one go. There we go. So unless we all do this, and we won't, because we all love our apps, and we all love to uh, be on Instagram, and we all love to, to use WhatsApp, you know, and, and so on. Uh, so, you know, unless we all do that, nothing is going to change. And that's, that's you, know, prof you know, as sad as it can be for, you know, for some companies, maybe some are very happy, you know, with what's happening, but there are a lot of companies that are disrupted by this, 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 this environment. But unless we all do that, and it won't happen, nothing, you know, we don't think that anything is going to change. Which is why we believe at the New York Times, and maybe we are unique, we're different, our model may be unique and different, and I, we're not saying that we are, you know, we're the model to follow for every, every news company, uh, at least you know, people that are in the news business, but we need to refocus our attention on the reader. Now, it's hard to say because when you're a publisher, of course you think of the reader, but I think a lot of the publishers today or news publishers perhaps are thinking a little bit too much about their advertisers and not, and not enough about their readers. Now, you think that if you think about your reader, it should also serve your advertisers. But I think that sometimes, you know, we all get sort of mixed up and, and sometimes our priorities are not always in the, right, uh, you know, in the right order. But for us, it was pretty obvious that we needed to focus on the reader. And this is why we need to focus on the reader. Going back to my earlier equation of, you know, print dollars not equating digital dollars. If your model is just in advertising, here you have the only, the only two companies that monetize digital well are Google and Facebook. They're the only two companies that, that monetize, uh, you know, digital very well. What's interesting is, you know, on the right, you have the New York Times sort of model for subscriptions. And where, you know, it's just one example, but, you know, but, but of course, you know, we're monetizing our digital reader extremely well. Advertising is a lot tougher. It's a lot, a lot, a lot tougher. And we're a big platform, and we get a lot of advertising, and we do, you know, in incredible things, as I will try to tell you. But, but, but it, it's, it's, it's tough. So, so that, that particular sort of uh, uh, graph shows what, uh, you know, what's uh, the challenge that, um, uh, that we have. So we made a public statement um, a couple of years ago to say uh, that we are not in a race for traffic 
and for clicks. Because we think that if you are in that, in that business, you're not going to go very far. Uh, and at least for us, it was very clear that we don't, we don't want to be in this you know, stupid race of you know, trying to build traffic at, at any cost and at the expense of your readers and the quality of what you're producing. So we made that statement. Uh, we are a subscription first company. So when the company made that statement, we're like, oh my God, me and my teams were like, well, I guess we're, <laughs> we're not going to have a good time anymore. And they, you know, and, and, but, but no, when you think about it for a second, it's really the only, the only way forward. And that's you know, what, uh, what, we have to, um, uh, what we have to do. And so the failing New York Times is a, a famous um, American president is, is calling us every, every other week. Um, uh, is, uh, is actually having a moment and having a, a very good time right now. So it's taken a long time, uh, but right now we're, we're doing very well. And our subscription business has, you know, has grown and has built very nicely. We had 4.5 million paying subscribers uh, globally. Uh, and, and that is because we, we have focused on the reader and we've done everything for uh, the reader. Um, it's... It was something that started before the U.S. election. We get the question a lot whether Trump has helped. And, you know, it's like, so yes, Trump has helped in the sense that in 2016, things have accelerated when the U.S. Uh, you know, uh, presidential campaign started. But it, the, 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 the growth started, started before. And so um, what, you know, what, what Trump has done is to make people realize that news was important and valuable. Uh, so we saw people coming back to subscribe. And whether people wanted to make a statement by doing that or felt that, I don't know, you know, but at least people and younger people, we saw younger people coming back. Um, I speak at, at universities a lot as well, and, and it's interesting that 10 years ago, none of the students read newspapers. Um, they had a very, very poor view of, of our business. And of course, everybody was saying it's a dying industry. <laughs> so, so you don't want to you don't want to associate yourself with something that's dying. You know, it's it's not it's, um, but it but it's very different today. Uh, so if we you know we can thank perhaps President Trump for this, but 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 and and a few other politicians who are kind of uh, you know careless in their statement and 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 reckless in the way that they they, they they conduct themselves. But but at least people go are coming back to news, and I think it's a good thing, not just for the New York Times, but for a lot of. Um, uh, you know, news companies uh, around the uh, around the world. If they would just uh, go, you want to go? There we go. Um, this is this is our stock. Um, so uh, the New York Times is uh, is still con um, uh, owned and controlled by a family, but eighty percent of our capital is on the market, and. And what's interesting is what's happening here and what has happened since uh, in, in the past two years. Um, it, 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 it's almost as if, and, and you saw the graph earlier with the growth in subscription, which started way, way, way before, you know. But something happened in 2017 when the world and, and perhaps financial analysts realized that news was valuable. Before, although there was this growth in subscriptions, uh, the belief was that the model, the advertising model, was still the, the, the thing to, to follow. And so companies like, you know, Vice and Huffington Post and all of these sort of pure advertising model companies were valued more than the New York Times. It's incredible to think about it, for, you know, but, but it's, you know, we have 1,600 journalists. We have correspondents around the world. You know, we have bureaus in, in, in Baghdad, in Kabul. We are, you know, we're... It's, it's, we're it, it's an incredible machine. We have 600 engineers just to back everything up with technology. And, and so, but it's interesting that these other companies that you know, post very, very, you know, I don't know how to say, sometimes you know, kind of a, uh, a tasteless content, uh, you know, were valued more than us. It's reversed. But it's been recent. It's been very recent. So we're, we're very, very, very happy, obviously, with this. And I want to show you this.
And so what you've actually seen is a pretty significant evolution in um, the business model of news. And really, the New York Times at the forefront of that. So uh, what you've seen is the, the business moving from an analog advertising-based business to an internet-based subscription business. Um, and interestingly, that's actually a better business model because it's all recurring revenue and it's digital distribution. And, um, so it's been a little while in the making, but similar to what you've seen with Spotify and music, you're actually seeing a similar kind of uh, trajectory for news, and your time is really dropping. Yeah. My God, I've been in this business forever. It's the first time that I see financial analysts saying you need to invest in a newspaper company. I waited all of this long for this, so that's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm glad I, st I sticked around. Um, but yeah, I think, I think some people are realizing that the news business is extremely valuable and, uh, and that it's just different, you know, we needed to find a model, uh, but perhaps we are, you know, we have found something. Uh, again, we're, you know, we're, we're different. We, uh, uh, you know, our home is, is the U.S., so it's a, big, it's a big market. We benefit from that as well. Uh, but still, it's, there is something that's worth... Um, you know, worth, uh, worth noting here. Um, and I always go back to this picture as well, which is that um, <clears throat> when S Steve Jobs introduced um, the iPhone and the iPad to the world, so, you know, this big global press conference, the very first image that he showed both times to, to the world was the New York Times. And back in 2007, that's when everybody was saying that we were a dying breed. And it was very really interesting to me and, and to others to say, okay, and there was no commercial arrangement with, you know, between Apple and the New York Times. Um, but I think that he saw what we're seeing today, which is that content, first of all, is extremely valuable. He, wasn't, he was clearly not thinking about advertising at the time, but content is extremely valuable. And brands, big brands, uh, valuable, trustworthy brands, credible brands like the New York Times, are also extremely valuable. So, so I think that there was something that, uh, there that's, uh, that perhaps says, um, says a lot. Now, in the meantime, of course, things have changed. Ten years ago, our revenue was predominantly coming from advertising. Today, our revenue is predominantly coming from subscriptions. You know, the ad business has, has been under, for us, as we saw together, has been under extreme pressure. Subscriptions went up. So we never had as many subscribers in our entire history as we do today. That's, you know, but of course that, you know, we, we had to put the investment in the product and making sure that, you know, people noticed the, um, the difference, but that's been, it's been quite a, uh, quite a shift. And so we just published uh, our 2018 results uh, uh, to, you know, mention just that. And the fact also that for the first time since that sort of digital revolution, our ad business went back up again. We had not seen it in, 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 over, you know, in over 10 years. We had seen sort of print decline, actually not compensated by digital gains. And for the first time, first of all, digital advertising took over print. So that's, you know, and, uh, you know, it took this long, but that was, you know, we're, we're, we're there. Uh, and, 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 fun, and we had a... Uh, we had a... Uh, we didn't have a blackout. We didn't... <laughs> um, Okay, no, no problem. No problem. Did I click on something? I can keep talking about. Uh, can I ask you a of course, let's let's do that. Yeah, yeah. What's the I'm curious about that. Uh, of revenue, yeah. conferences, okay. um, uh, syndication. Okay. It's mainly conferences and syndication. That's really uh, the other uh, other activities that we uh, you know that we have and we sell. So yeah. Um, so I have to I guess go back to my. Um, to this mode right here. All right, so um, how, do we, you know, how do we get all of this? And this is going back to what I was saying, is that we, you know, we've, been, we've been putting a lot of um, 
uh, a lot of focus and, and effort on, on making sure that our report would be as, uh, you know, as, uh, as, good, as good as possible. We want to be provocative uh, you know, with, uh, you know, with our pieces. Um, and uh, Farad Manju, who was our tech reporter for, for a long time, he's now an opinion writer, and we very much, you know, in, in American sort of publishing companies, we sort of separate news from, from opinion, uh, and he has very interesting sort of pieces like this one I would, I would highly recommend uh, you to read. You know, of course, we're sort of debating about, you know, where is all this going? You know, should, should these companies become public companies? I don't know. Um, and... Um, uh, and, and of course, sort of uh, photo, oh my God, uh, photojournalism is also something quite, uh, quite, quite important at the, at the New York Times. We have 300 photographers, uh, and we're now also putting a lot of technology behind our stories. Uh, this is sort of, uh, you know, VR became uh, a moment for us two or three years ago, and we continue to produce a lot of VR films. It's just another sort of way of actually uh, telling stories. Uh, and you don't sort of, uh, you know, tell stories exactly in the same way. Or uh, augmented reality is also something, you know, not new, but coming back. And of course, you know, the newsroom is sort of using it uh, to, uh, you know, to great effect uh, in, uh, you know, for, for different things. And of course, sports is a great, uh, is a great way of, um, you know, for that. Uh, but, um, I'm sorry, it's connection is, it will come. There we go. Um, oops, and let me go back to. There we go. Um, yes, and of course, um, audio. I mean, podcast and audio becoming big. You hear, you know, you hear about this a lot. Uh, we've launched this podcast um, a year and a half ago, and it's become the number one selling podcast on on, on Apple, uh, on the App Store, and um, and and so we. Um, we, we think that, that voice is, is be, you know, is, has, a regain, has regained uh, interest. Uh, and so we are, you know, on this, you know, to, on, uh, to, to build on the success of, uh, of the daily, we are going to launch something, uh, an equivalent um, program on television. Uh, and, uh, and we are thinking about uh, many other uh, products uh, for audio. So definitely audio is, a, you know, is, is really at the heart of what we do. Again, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we, we, we couldn't think of all of these different sort of, uh, uh, you know, ways of telling stories. We were predominantly text and pictures. We're going to continue to be that, uh, of course. That's the, the, the bedrock of what we do. And, uh, and it works very well, you know, for us. Um, and despite what everyone says, yes, you know, the world is more visual. Now, I guess it's, you know, it's audio will, you know, and I don't know about the statistics in Europe, but, uh, but in America... I think within two years, you know, you're going to have 80% of American homes that will have a, you know, a smart speaker at home. Man, it's, it's coming. Yeah, it's like, you know, so we're not quite there, you know, yet in Europe, but um, but it's coming. So uh, so we have to be um, we have to be ready. We haven't quite figured out exactly uh, how we're going to make it work, and from from a financial standpoint, but we will, uh, you know, we will see. So where does that leave advertising into all of this? And what, what, what does advertising mean to us? And sort of, you know, we have this world that's massively disrupted, at least for us. Um, and, um, you know, financing, you know, is, uh, you know, a lot of publishers are still looking for the right, um, the right balance, the right model. Uh, so where does that leave sort of advertising? First of all, we're going to continue to carry advertising, uh, you know, for, for a very long time. But for a long time, Journalists like um, um, Jim Rutenberg, who, ha who comments on media uh, a lot, he's a great, uh, he's a fantastic writer, um, wrote this piece a couple of years ago that said that ad buyers have a say where the real news survives. And I, I, that, 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 that story sort of ca caught my attention. I was like, so I, I said, yes, on one hand he's right, because advertisers have been funding you know, you know, journalism and publishers for a long time. On the other hand, I think he's wrong because marketers are not here and advertisers are not here to save publishers. You are all working for companies and you need to sell your own products and services. And for a long time, important newspapers like the New York Times, and I'm sure it's the same at El País and Le Monde and others, think that they have so many wonderful writers and journalists who are so smart that advertisers should come and put all of their marketing dollars there, you know, to be next to them, 
those days are over. And we need to, we need to, we need to realize this. I say we, it's a collective we. You know, it's not just us at the New York Times. So yes, on the one hand, because that's been the main source of financing, but on the other, no. I think that you know, it's, uh, we, we have to understand that uh, if the dollars are going that way, it's because something is happening. When I saw this the first time, so those are two of our very sort of dear cl and close clients, I almost fell over my chair. I was like, my God, what are these people doing? I mean, you know, this lady right here, um, you know, who wears sort of graph jewelry, probably has, you know, half a million euros on each ear. Um, probably, you know, close to that, you know, for, for Van Cleef. And I was like, what are these companies doing on Instagram? And when I saw this, I was like, hmm, my God, everything is really changing. <laughs> Uh, it's like, you know, so this is WeTransfer and, um, and we work a lot with the, with the luxury industry, number one category for us. Um, you know, we're very close and, and, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, I thought about it for a second. I was like, is there anything wrong with that? No. You know, it's actually, you're in front of your screen, you, you know, they take over the entire screen. You're waiting for your file to go. I don't know whether it's the right moment, context, whatever, but, but, um, but there's probably nothing, nothing wrong with that. So anyway, so definitely things are profoundly, profoundly sort of changing. And for a long time, and still, marketing was doing two things. Whether you were looking for performance or you were looking for branding. And for many, many years, for decades, newspapers were doing both. Now, one thing that most people forget about newspapers is that before the, uh, the internet sort of, uh, before the internet became, became a factor, we were good at performance. And all of that was gone from almost one day to the next. It was, so all of the classified, and you think about it, all classified advertising represented about half of the revenue of newspapers like El Pais or the New York Times or the Monde or the Figaro, half all of a sudden, all of that. You, so you need to adapt. You need to adapt your, your businesses to this thing. So now I think this you know, performance is probably gone you know, for, for, you know, for newspapers. And we have to focus on the other thing, which is branding. And I think we still have a lot to do on the branding side. Do, 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 do. Um, but of course we are, you know, and I will not go back to, to this uh, side, but the, 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 the problem is what, you know, also I think we said earlier is the click. You know, we, we, there is the, this dominance and this, um, uh, you know, this, uh, it's, like, it's, like, uh, it's like a dictatorship almost. Like, you know, everyone is obsessed with a click. And you click, you're good. You don't click, you're nothing. You're nobody. You don't click, you're nobody for marketers. Um, I would argue that, you know, people who don't click, we, we, we have a hard time capturing them today. Uh, and, uh, but maybe these people are, you know, are also valuable. And when we all sort of measure performance, when I speak to marketers around, you know, around the world, they say, oh, you know, I, I, my campaign worked on your site. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that my you know, click-through you know, rate has gone, you know, was point whatever. What does that mean, point whatever? I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's tiny, it's small, it's, it's, it, you know, it's something. And this is how we measure success today. I think there's something that's fundamentally wrong. Um, and, and we should try to capture what is happening to the person who, does, who doesn't click. When you come to the New York Times website, you don't, you, don't, you don't come to click on an ad. That's not where you come from. And actually, I would say that the people who come and click may not be the, the right ones, may not be the ones you, you, you want to have. You should be able to speak with your message to people who actually come and read and be exposed to your message. And, uh, and if it is brand content, yes, they may choose, they may opt to actually go in that story. But just, you know, people that click and zap and go, but that's how we measure success. And there is something there that's not, I, we feel that um, we, uh, we have to change. Um, so the first thing that we're saying is that we should change the approach on ad effectiveness. Uh, and we need to redefine what ad effectiveness really is. Um, um, whoops. Whoop. This clicker is just... Uh, okay. 
Because, because that's, you know, of, despite all of this and despite all of the scandals, what's interesting is that, you know, of 1,000 ad spenders on Facebook, only seven actually, actually did something. It's, it's tiny. So, so the world, that's where the world is. And so marketers feel that, you know, this company is doing something right for them. And it's interesting that it's doing something right, whether you're a big company and whether you're a tiny hotel, you're a small retailer. So it's kind of, it seems like it's the solution for all today. Are they, you know, is that really it? I don't know. But unless we change how we perceive performance, um, I, I don't think that it's going to, uh, it's going to do anything. Um, if you just you know, do this exercise of actually you know, looking at what, you know, what, what brands do on, on Instagram, they stack each other on top, you know, and, and um, it, it's, quite, it's quite remarkable. Um, you know, as I said, you know, we've been working with the luxury industry for, for a long time. That's our number one category. We know these people very well. We know how they view media. We know what they want. And all of a sudden, when they're on Instagram, all of the rules they've been giving us for years, for decades, are gone. It's like they don't follow any of the rules anymore. It's like it's gone. So it's kind of an obsession. It's something. But unless, you know, but, but I would argue that Bouchon is far better here than it is over there, when you, you've seen a thousand images, you know, in a, you know, just a sh very short period of time. So, um, so anyway, there is, we need, you know, we, we, we do need to do, um, uh, I need to do something with this clicker <laughs> in particular. <laughs> oh. Just maybe the, the battery is off? No? Um, you think that's, I don't know. Oh, yes. there you go. I need to, yeah, point, that's yeah. what I'm, oh, I need to get closer, I need to get closer to the computer, I, I will get closer to the computer. Now, what, what's happening is that people are obsessed today with several things. They're obsessed with their own social presence, and marketers are obsessed with their own social presence, which, which explains, you know, some of what is happening. And of course, you all have, and we all have to build our own social channels, and we need to bring traffic to those channels, and so, of course, that participates into, uh, you know, into... Um, into this. So, um, oh God, it's really, get closer even? Yeah? No, there we go. Um, so yeah, so we're saying that the pressure to deliver short-term results, uh, you know, make us sometimes forget sort of the long-term impact of what advertising really does, you know, to, um, you know, to, uh, uh, to someone. And what we are doing increasingly is to try to, um, to, to is to <laughs> now it's you know it's picking up steam. <laughs> My God. Oh, yeah, I won't. oh my God. <laughs> anyway, what, we, what what this other slide with his brain was was uh, was meant to to tell you um, is that the um, we need to understand how memory works better. Uh, I think that right now we're just obsessed with traffic and we're obsessed with delivery of, you know, of, uh, 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 of ads. But, but I think that we're, we're missing the point, which is that for, for a very, very long time, you know, all of these brands got built without all of these new tools. So what, you know, what we want to try to understand better is, you know, if you, if you give it another 10, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, which is the time that it's taken for some of the biggest brands in the world to build, you know, what will it do to, the, you know, to, 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 to these brands or to the new brands that will come you know, and form. And, and actually, you know, first of all, branding, we think, is extremely important um, uh, you know, for, for companies. And, uh, and the ones that do take care of their brand and build their brand actually are better off over time than, than others. So um, you want to help me uh, with that? That's wonderful. And the other thing that, um, uh, that I think we're, we're missing today is, is what advertising is meant to do, which is not just you know, you know, sort of sticking and giving a good and positive image of a brand or a company, but it's also, um, it's also the emotion that it brings. Advertising, we all remember great advertising campaigns that brought emotions to us because they, were, you know, because they moved us, because they were funny, because they... they, they and, do, do we get that with digital today? Well, we're just doing this. I'm not sure. So we need to, you know, I think, I think the time that we spend, but you need time to do this. And the time that we spend also with a particular medium is, you know, is something that we should, uh, we should, we should consider. Thank you. I will sort of use you as a... Um, 
So what we're trying to do here uh, as a first sort of step towards that is to predict emotions when people are reading some of our articles. And we have built a model to predict uh, whether people feel joyful, people feel like they're in an adventure mood, whether they feel hate, whether they feel fear, and we try to, to target against these emotions. So this is something that we've started to, uh, we've started to do. Yeah, we can sort of accelerate just on that. And if you have questions, I can answer questions later about, uh, about this. Um, Yeah, or you can target against certain emotions as well. So, um, so anyway, so I think that this is something that's going to be it's going to be increasingly uh, increasingly important in the uh, you know in the in the future. Um, the second thing is to we is to rethink the display model. Um, um, we I think we are all tired of sites that have too many ads, sites you know sites that have ads that move too much, that blink. Uh, you know, sites where you wallpaper the entire thing. Maybe you use that. Maybe you as marketers sort of use all of these beautiful sort of, uh, uh, you know, creative uh, solutions. Um, we think that it's, um, uh, it, it's annoying to the reader. And if you are in the business of building subscriptions, you want to stay away from that. Because that's, we think that's the number one reason for people to turn on their ad blockers. And it defeats the whole purpose of advertising. And so we have to be extremely careful. So the reading experience, and through it, the advertising experience, has to be as qualitative as it can be. Otherwise, it, def it defeats all purpose of, of marketing and advertising. So what we have done is, um, we can, uh, uh, is, is we've completely redesigned our, our own site to have fewer but bigger ads. Okay, so the, the way forward for us is fewer but bigger ads on the, on the site. Now, What's interesting here is that, um, um, you know, I was speaking to, to a big media agency uh, sort of last week who were telling me that our viewability ratio had improved but was not quite the same as, you know, other competitors who are in the same field as we are. So, well, okay, what do you mean by that and what do the others do? And so the others are doing smaller ads that are more viewable. So the agency is happy. I guess the advertiser is happy, but should the advertiser be happy? We think bigger ads are bigger and better and more impactful, and we can prove this. But yes, we're all obsessed with those new metrics and notions that I'm not sure are entirely right. I'm not saying it's all wrong, but you know, we, we, should, we should give it some measure. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and again, you know, if all these new techniques, for example, of having ads to stick on the page for as long as possible, so it, Again, you know, I, it, does the reader want that? No, I, we, we, we don't think that's necessarily the, uh, for us at least, the, 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 thing to, um, the thing to do. So anyway, we're, we're, uh, um, um, we can sort of look at, yeah, we can uh, look at different things. We're studying this very, very carefully to see the impact of this and where we should be putting, uh, putting ads. Um, yeah, so, so those are, those are examples, yeah, if you can stick to this one, I, I mean, the, the page looks clean, looks nice, um, we, this is something we, we would not recommend, um, you know, advertisers to do, or, um, uh, because when you think, about, I mean, this is, to, we don't know what's that, you know, if you, if you want to, if you want to be a subscriber, to this website, you know, it should, I don't, I don't know if you're speaking to the person who wants to be a subscriber to this website. That's, you know, our view. So this, these are the kind of things we think it, that is too much. It looks nice, but we think it's a little bit too much. Um, branded content. We want to continue to build meaningful branded content. Yeah, can you... Uh, um, branded content has built um, uh, very nicely for, for the New York Times and for many publishers around the world. It's got to be good. It's got to be as good almost as what our own newsroom is producing. I'm showing you this film that we produced for Siemens. It was part of a story, so that was just a video that we built for them. Um, and I would be very happy to send you links to uh, many of, uh, of you know, the stories or similar stories that we do. 
Um, but, but this is the kind of story that actually our readers enjoy when reading any article of the New York Times in terms of quality and in terms of tech, you know, the technology that we put behind it. So when you build branded content with your agency um, and uh, you know, with your different partners, uh, you, have to, you have to think of who you're addressing, you know, the audience, the platform, the brand you're associated with, and the reader expectation. And so if the reader sort of expects something really good, um, uh, you, know, you should also do that with branded content. Otherwise, the, the reader you know, has that remote control when that works and, um, uh, and has the ability to go into the story or not the story. So it's got to be. So for us, we, we, we think it's, you know, it's going to continue to grow. Right now, branded content is about $35 billion a year collectively. It's going to grow to about $55 billion in the next four or five years. That's going to continue. The demand is going to continue to, to be, uh, to, you know, to be with, uh, with partners, agency partners, with publishers. So, uh, so we're going to continue to invest. We, um, T Brand Studio, which is our creative unit, has 175 people today, uh, and we've brought in uh, expertise from, you know, people uh, who are journalists, people who are designers, um, experts in social media because that plays a part. Uh, anyway, audience development, all kinds of. Uh, uh, jobs that, that you need, but, um, but uh, we feel that this is something that uh, needs to be done. Um, and then you need to diversify your services. We feel like, you know, display is one thing, but we don't know where it's going. It's going predominantly to the social platforms. So we've got to build brand content and we've got to build different services as well. Services th through influencer marketing. I know there's a lot that, that's being said out there about influencer marketing. But it's like any field, any activity. You've got good ones and you've got, you've got not so, so good ones. Uh, but we do believe that there are uh, uh, quality networks uh, out there and companies. And we actually acquired a company called uh, Hello Society. And we, uh, we work with them very closely and we provide sort of that service, mostly in the US, but we're thinking about it outside of the US as well. Uh, and again, this, this is about a $2 billion industry right now. Uh, it's projected to be about a $10 billion industry in the next four to five years. So that's going to continue to grow. I mean, despite it, with everything, it would, you know, what some people are saying, we think, and the, some of the scandals, we think it's going to continue to grow. Um, another thing that we've been uh, investing in is experiential marketing. So creating events, creating experiences uh, for marketers. So this is sort of, you know, kind of different and, and uh, you know, from advertising, from regular advertising. But we also acquired a company called Fake Love. Yeah. Um, they are, um, and through technology, they are they are building, uh, you know, they are building uh, 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 different different experiences, and um, and then consulting, uh, publishing, uh, consulting. That's what we've been doing for 150 years. We've been putting out. Con we know how to publish content. You, as marketers, have become publishers as well. Uh, you all have a lot of content to put, you know, you all, all are thinking about, okay, what is my story? What sort of, you know, information I need to present? How do I organize it? So this is something that we did for HP. And so we, uh, we sent three people to live with HP for three months. And, uh, and they came back with this sort of uh, little book and this recommendation as to, you know, what, what is HP doing with its content? And so there was sort of our, you know, book of recommendation. And then... With that came uh, uh, came this. You may have to. Yeah. Nearly 80 years ago, Bill Hewlett and Dave Packer set a spark that ignited the future, and their Palo Alto garage became the birthplace of Silicon Valley. Back then, they had no idea their garage would continue to be the symbol of innovation and a belief that anything is possible. And it's for this reason that I want to welcome you to the garage by HP. We'll introduce you to innovators, partners, HP employees, and thought leaders helping to shape and improve the future of our world. We'll bring you authentic perspectives on challenging concepts from daring digital artists to urban inventors, from global corporations to entrepreneurs in emerging markets. And encourage you to keep reinventing what matters most to you. So
So this was this was actually produced by by um, um, T Brand Studio, and and we what we recommend uh, recommended HP to do was to create a series of stories called the Garage, and so the, the the series was the Garage, and so to 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 you know put it in a nice and fun way about how you know these different. Um, uh, successes within the HP organization came came about. So so there was one sort of new story. I think it was every uh, other week or something. And so uh, so anyway, that's still on their website. And uh, so we we do a lot more of that today as well. Um, so you know it is definitely branded content. It is um, uh, influencer marketing. It is uh, different sort of services through experiences and more in, more increasingly in in con, you know in consulting uh, for for publishing creativity. And yes, and print still works. Uh, you know, despite all of this, um, what's interesting is that we still have, um, you know, print business that's that's uh, that's doing well. Um, and I don't know if many people would have predicted this uh, 15, 20 years ago, but um, but we still print around the uh, around the world. You can, yeah. Um, and 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 print is still something that extremely, uh, it, you know, it, it, what's interesting with um, with digital is that you know the creativity comes within usually the video or the infographics, and you can do incredible things. Um, but for display, it's kind of, you know, it's become very standardized. Uh, we've all been Googleized, in a way. And, you know, we're kind of uh, all in the same units as being served by the same, um, you know, systems. And, and uh, I remember when in the early days of digital, we had really creative things, uh, you know, I think. And, and now it's kind of become very standardized. So I think that, you know, what's interesting is that we've seen a lot of advertisers coming back to print, especially last year, for creative ideas. Uh, of course, it's not, you know, it's not a, a you know, swing, full swing back. But for really interestingly, they came back because they realized that print can still be very creative and we can do great things. And by the way, our number one advertiser in print is Google. Um, uh, and um, uh, our number two advertiser is Netflix. Um, uh, last year, when uh, in the midst of the big sort of scandal around Facebook, what did Facebook do? They advertised in print. Um, so, you know, so yes, I'm not saying that, you know, all of a sudden there's, there's a new, re you know, uh, inverted revolution, but, but it's interesting that, you know, people still see the value of print as something of, uh, that has status and, um, and, it, and it can still be, although that's just a full page, but it can still be extremely, extremely creative. So I will end here, and uh, I love this quote. Um, one of the famous sort of, uh, you know, marketers says, yes, you know, advertising can be fun, uh, but we need, to, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, it stays fun and, and informative and, of, you know, of great quality. So thank you, and I will, you know, be happy to answer any questions you have. You have. So. Um, I, I, can't, I can't give you those numbers. I'm not allowed to because, because we're a publicly traded company as well. We can't, we can't speak about you know, financial numbers. Um, so what I can tell you is that um, we, right now, so for us, we're, we're measuring success with the number of subscribers that we have. We had 4.5 million. Three, four years ago, we thought we would perhaps, perhaps get to 3 million. We're way over that. Now the new, the new objective is 10 million. Inc it will have to come from outside of the US for a good portion. Uh, and we think there, is, there are enough uh, people who read English uh, out there and who want to have access to, you know, to quality news just so that we can get there. But it will have to be increasingly coming from outside of the US. Today it's a good portion uh, it's a significant portion, but the majority is in the U.S. Uh, if we if we can get to 10 million, it will have to uh, to come from from outside. Not all, but but a good portion will have to come from outside. 
to, to your question about the UK, you mentioned the UK. What's interesting is that, and I can tell you about uh, the audience now, um, uh, we, we benefit in the English-speaking countries. Um, it was not the case in print. When it was, you know, in pre-internet days, um, our biggest countries were not the English-speaking ones because they had newspapers already and good ones. If you take the UK, for example, there are plenty of newspapers, very good qualitative newspapers, so we were just one of many. In digital, we produce so much content uh, that uh, in order to exist in digital, you need to produce a lot. We have 1,600 journalists, 600 engineers. We write about politics, about food, about arts, about sports, and about you know, anything. Uh, so, and with the same sort of level of credibility. So that, that helps in digital. So yes, the English-speaking countries bring us more readers today than the others, but we still have, you know, we have about a million readers in France, we have, you know, close to that here, we have, so it's, it's not bad, it's not bad. We have 1,600 right now, so 16, 1,600 uh, journalists right now. We just, we added another 120 in 2018 uh, alone. And the good results that we've been, we've published, uh, our CEO said that we're going to continue to invest in more journalists. So yes, we are, we're going a little bit, you know, with, against the trend right now. I was mentioning earlier today that, um, uh, journalist uh, is is the one um, you know is the one profession that has been decimated in the past 15 years. Uh, people don't realize that you know uh, that we we've lost more journalists in this period of time that we've lost coal miners. Um, you know it's not spoken about that you know as much, but it, it's been it's been it's been dramatic, really dramatic, and so which is also why I'm. I'm Kind of wanted to put things in, in the context, in the broader context, that it, you know, that that you know, of what's happening. So, uh, hopefully, we will see. You know, we we're unique. We 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 really understand that. But but I hope that other newspapers will also find their own way, just so that we are, we're not in 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 a similar uh, situation. And no. It's a completely separate uh, team. So these, hundred, these 100, 175 people work for advertising. They work for us. Uh, they're not part of the newsroom. They, they were journalists uh, at one point uh, for the ones who write. Um, but, and they're still journalists. They just do it for brands, and they do it within the ad department. They don't do it for... Uh, they're, not, they're, not, they're not part of the newsroom of the New York Times. We want to separate things. Very, we want to make it very clear for, for readers. I think we have more people working today in the newsroom uh, than we did back then. We have less people in the company, so they've been. <laughs> uh, so we've adjusted. We went through tough times as well. So we adjusted. What was very interesting is that if you if you look at the company ten years ago, and we went through very very com difficult times, um, uh, we we made big cuts. We didn't cut any job in the newsroom. It was. It was a bold decision on the part of owners and a tough one, but, but I think it was, was the right... Um, if, you, if you cut your engine, it, it starts to get difficult. How do you think that's transformed the way targets are set for journalists and the way that 
news has gathered in the way that what do you think is so broadly the same? So I don't think it's changed. Um, I don't think it's changed. I think the New York Times has never given ways to, um, um, to, to sort of these clickbait techniques. Um, uh, you know, and even if you go back to the early days of the site, you, know, you wouldn't find uh, anything like it. Um, um, we, what you know, what, what the, the company says is that we're, um, especially today, uh, you know, uh, is that we prefer to have fewer page views, but page views that will generate subscriptions, rather than having millions of page views that will generate nothing. And, and so it's, it's easy, you know, <laughs> what, what I find, you know, what I find so really sad sometimes is when you go to some websites who are new sites that are supposedly serious, and you see inevitably the woman in a bikini, and you see, it's, it's sad in a way. And if you look carefully, you will find her. It's sad. So we, we, we have, we, but that's, that's because the model is that. But, but even, I, I don't know, I, ju I just think that, you know, we, we're shooting, you know, publishers are shooting themselves in the foot when they do this, in a way. They may get short-term gains by getting a lot of, you know, advertising coming programmatically, but at very low price. And I don't think it's, it's I don't think it's sustainable. And I think readers will continue to zap, and that's not what you want. Just one last question. Um, in terms of gaining subscribers, do you, can you sort of track, for example, have you noticed when a specific story worked very well? Did it bring subscribers, or is it usually because you have an in-house team, which are, well, I guess it's a mix? It, marketing, no, subscription marketing has become quite sophisticated today. Uh, and uh, so, we, so what, what we know is that um, um, you know, we, can, we, can, we can follow, uh, you know, we can follow readers uh, and know uh, that after, you know, the ones that come back several days, the ones that consume so many articles are more likely to subscribe than others. It's logical, but it's, you know, so we need to make sure that someone who comes we sort of keep, you know, we keep the person on the site. Uh, so we recommend a lot of things that we think is interesting, you know, to, to him or her. And, um, and, and we know that, yes, that, that sort of um, engagement uh, is key to, to, to this person to become a subscriber. Um, it's, it, would, it would be interesting to see, I mean, the, the price of subscriptions, it's become very competitive. Uh, we're, you know, we're promoting, we're, ad we're advertising, we're marketing. Um, the price has gone down a little bit, so it shows that it's, you know, it's, uh, it is competitive uh, out there. But unless you have this, this, this group of uh, very loyal followers, uh, then it's, you know, it's not um, the business. Business, business is quite impossible, in fact. We do, we do, we do. No, no, we do. I mean, it's not. And again, you know, it's uh, my, my our view. Our view about um, you know, social is not going away. Facebook's not going away. Um, I, I think it's the concentration, which is a little. Uh, it's the concentration, and it is what, what, I guess, what maybe. Uh, I mean. The, I don't know if, this, you know if the platforms are the ones to... You know, I don't think they're the ones to blame. I think, I think you can criticize them for some of the things they do and, and, you know, and on how they sell the data, how they track us. And, you know, that's, so some of the things can be, can be questioned. Um, maybe it's what is recommended to marketers, which is maybe a little sometimes uh, um, also questionable. Um, but, um, yeah, it's... it's um, one thing about you know one thing about Facebook if you're a publisher, don't rely on Facebook too much, uh, because if your audience is on Facebook and not on your own platform, then you have a problem, because they control the ad model, and they can change the algorithm from one day to the next, and if you have the majority of your uh, traffic on Facebook or coming from Facebook, you're in real trouble.
continuous. Because now, uh, I mean, my impression is that it's not the majority of people that really want to read quality and serious and rigorous news, and also affected by the influence of the social media. Many people, myself sometimes, read news superficially, and many of them are fake. So what do you think about the future? I mean, do you think that readers and people in the future will change into looking for better, more serious, or you know, not so fake news, or the consumption still remain the same for, for a few years? Do you think that the readers in general, not the lawyer ones or a minority, but most of readers will become, I mean, more different? <coughs> Um, so, so it's um, um, yeah. We may need we may need drinks over this question. <laughs> no, I it, it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one because I think um, uh, fake news uh, is a reality of has always been a reality. We've always you know we, we we've always seen um, magazines or newspaper around that have been kind of scandalous. They've always existed. Um, and, um, and I don't think that it's something, I, I don't think it's a new phenomenon. What is new is that now these, these people have a megaphone to speak. And, you know, and uh, I, I don't know, I, I, don't think, I don't think we can, I don't know, I don't know whether we can do anything about it, uh, frankly. Um, I think it's th maybe through education, um, teaching our kids to make a difference, to tell them what's good, what's not good, or what's not you know, what's transparent, credible, uh, trustworthy, and what is, you know. Uh, but, but, but if someone wants to read um, something, you can't, it's hard to prevent that person from, 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 from doing that, I think. Um, it's, um, I, I don't know, I, it's a real, it's, it's a big question, but I don't know if there's a solution. I... Um, I sit on the, I, because we, we publish in France and we print in France also, I, I sit on, on the board of French newspapers and, and this question is often debated and, and France wants to pass a law that uh, would fight fake news and, um, and it's, it's an impossible question. You know, what is fake? You know, Trump calls us fake news every day. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I don't know, I, you know, where's the limit? I don't know. influences more politically, let's say. So uh, even for people that we are interested in really not so uh, biased news, I have the feeling that now it's more and more difficult to find more neutral news. news. So I, I think that there are other for people looking for something better. So I don't know if this will become bigger and this frustration will make that people, uh, as I said before, uh, will become more demanding or, you know. The I, I, I don't know. It's a big, it's a big question. There, there was, um, uh, I met with this um, um, French company recently. He's a guy that just put a new um, app out there. I don't know if it will succeed or not, but he, his, his, his website is scanning thousands of different newspapers every day from around the globe and trying to come up with something which is as objective as possible. I don't know whether we people will you know will switch to that and will I don't know I, it's 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 a it's a hard one. What we know is that we want to um, uh, it's tough. You know, if you, if you ask people, you know, if you if you have people if you ask people who are die-hard Republicans in the U.S., um, uh, they're, they're, if you ask them their views on the New York Times, they will probably think we're we're a bunch of crap. You know, and that we're we're fake news in a way. So people get very polarized over this, and I don't, I don't know whether you can, we, can, we can regulate it. I think the only thing that pre can prevent us is to have different views, different opinions, different, in, enough newspapers around just so that people can have a different, you know, make their own opinion. Um, I don't know if it can be regulated. 
I ho I'm like you. I'm I'm shocked and 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 uh, I, you know I'm, I'm appalled at some of the things that I see. But I, I I think we have to teach. I see with my kids, for example. I think it's it's good that in their you know in their school teachers are making them you know read and choose among you know a list of maybe ten different um, publications. But they're all very you know very trustworthy and and, and credible. And uh, so we'll see. Let's see. Um, one final question, please, because he's been up here for a while now. Um, one one more? more? Refer? Yeah? Perfect. Sorry. Uh, do you think there's like, kind of intoxication of product content for the readers? W could there be? Intoxication. There is. I mean, this is oh, there is? It's, it's happening. I mean, there's fake uh, content, or there's real content that looks as if it was real news and it's really bad content so there's kind of intoxication that you are getting that it's acceptable what you're reading. I don't know if you I guess you have very separated the New York Times but I think uh, I I'm, I yeah I, I think again you just, just like just, I think everything everything is out there, uh, and you have you have many publishers, including important ones, who, uh, who are asking their newsroom to produce content for brands. We don't think it's the right thing to do, but again, each we each have our own model. Uh, if you take Lifestyle magazine, it's just it's all over the place. Um, I think each publication sees things differently. Um, it's it's you know the perfect. I, I'm not sure there's a perfect world. <laughs> Um, out there, but at least for uh, uh, you know, for us, what we know is that we, you know, our readers need to to be told the difference between the two, and 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 even if it's branded and paid for, it needs to be of good enough quality. Um, you know, I, you know, and of course there is everything out there, but but it's uh, um, but it would be hard. You know, we all sit in different sort of um, industry groups and, and associations, and this question is often, you know, brought up: Should we have a collect, you know, collectively? Should we have guidelines? Should we have rules? But but our guidelines are so different from from other newspapers or publications or or news sites that only rely on advertising. What do you, it's hard, I don't know where the, uh, the, the the limit is. I think it's. I think I think the responsible. I think we should trust the readers. Despite you know what's, uh, I think we should trust readers uh, to to make to make their uh, their own judgment and difference and so. Well, thank you very much. No, thank you, thank I you, thank think, you. Uh, uh, following up on that question and, and your whole presentation, I think, uh, and for all of us that create content, I think your uh, the New York Times um, bet on quality and people, I think, is possibly the solution to. You know, quality takes time and professional people. So I think uh, it's been really inspirational. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>